Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the exponential distribution. This is a uh, distribution that is associated with uh, waiting times and uh, first occurrences along along a line in distance. Um, perhaps uh, also first uh, molecule in in uh, a volume as you expand around a given point. Um, so so these kinds of processes are are exponentially distributed. We will encounter a few in examples and hopefully. Uh, the context of the exponential distribution will become a little more clear. Uh, the exponential uh, probability density is given by uh, rho of x uh, is equal to a parameter lambda e to the minus lambda x. And so lambda represents the frequency along the line, in the timeline, etc. Um, and uh, frequency of events. And, um, and so this sort of shows uh, the nature of the um, of the probability density. It starts when x is equal to zero at a value lambda, and then is this exponential decay. Okay, so if we start with this uh, exponential probability density and we compute the cumulative probability, uh, uh, which is defined on zero to infinity of um, of uh, the first of first event being at a value less than or equal to x, um, then we have that double bar p uh, of x is one minus e to the minus lambda x. Okay, so you can derive this by integrating the probability density between uh, minus infinity to uh, up to some value x. Of course, it's zero. This density is zero for all x less than or equal to zero. Uh, so that's just equivalent to an integral from zero up to x of this probability density, and that's how you get. Uh, this cumulative probability. Remember that was just our definition of the cumulative probability uh, distribution. Okay, so the mean of an exponentially distributed random variable uh, is uh, is one over lambda, uh, where lambda is that frequency parameter, and the variance is uh, one over lambda squared. Okay, so this uh, distribution is not peaked. It always has this same form. Uh, we're not talking about anything where you discuss a number of samples or anything like that. We are waiting for a first event along a line. Uh, okay, so uh, there is an important relationship between Poisson uh, variables in the discrete case and exponential variables in the continuous case. Okay, so if we suppose that the number of events per unit length is Poisson distributed, that is, we take an interval of length one and uh, and uh, then the Poisson parameter uh, is going to be lambda. And now we can ask um, also the question, what is the length x from a point zero, uh, which is completely arbitrary, uh, where the first event is going to occur? Okay, so if we say there is not an event at zero and I'm going to now wait, I'm going to move along the axis until I reach the first event, uh, that first event location is a random variable that we're going to call x. And uh, so the, the distance x to the first event, the probability that that distance x to the first event exceeds x is equivalent to asking what is the probability that there are no events in the interval from 0 to x. Okay, so we can write down this, uh, this probability that the first event occurs at some value of x greater uh, than a specific value x as e to the minus uh, lambda x. So notice my Poisson parameter now is the frequency times the length of the interval that we're considering, which now is x. And so, so the expected number in that interval is lambda x. And so I have a Poisson distribution with e to the minus lambda x uh, times lambda x to the power of 0 over 0 factorial. Why 0? Because we want uh, the first event to occur at some place greater than x. Uh, so, so we have to have 0 events in the interval of length x. So that just simplifies to e to the minus lambda x. And, uh, and so uh, now we can go through and we can uh, just note that the probability that the first event occurs at some place uh, greater than x is 1 minus the probability that the first event has already occurred at x, uh, which is just by definition 1 minus that cumulative probability distribution up to a point x. Okay, so this is the formula that we just got. Uh, for the cumulative probability distribution uh, in the exponential case, right? So, um, so by differentiating this, we should arrive back to our exponential probability distribution. And so that really illustrates the relationship between the cumulative probability distribution for an exponential 
uh, exponentially distributed random variable and the Poisson distribution for a discrete random variable. So asking the question how many uh, events occur within an interval that is a Poisson distributed variable in the discrete case and how long of an interval do I have to go until I reach the first event is an exponentially uh, exponentially uh, distributed variable and we use the same lambda for both of these two processes. Lambda represents a frequency of events along the real line in both cases. Okay, so uh, so what we want to do now is to is to prove the formula that we gave for the mean of our exponential random variable. Okay, so if we just do that by definition, we're going to start with uh, the mean is an integral from minus infinity up to infinity of x times the density at x multiplied by x. Okay, so we're multiplied by dx. Uh, okay, so this is the, the integral that we have to do. The uh, lam this uh, x times rho of x becomes lambda x e to the minus lambda x. Uh, we can make a substitution here and call lambda x this parameter u. In order to do that, I have to divide by 1 over lambda because I'm going to multiply by uh, lambda. In the, the dx becomes d lambda x, right? So I have to now divide by uh, 1 over lambda to cancel out the extra factor of lambda. Okay, so you integrate by parts, and I will leave you to do that uh, manipulation. Uh, but integration by parts now, um, we're going to want to take the derivative of the u. Uh, so we'll um, let that be the, the v term and uh, do our integration by parts and that gives us uh, 1 over lambda uh, minus uh, e to the minus u evaluated at 0 and infinity and we have uh, that that comes down to 1 over lambda. Okay, so this is really intuitively what, what you would think, right? So if you say that events occur uh, 1 per 10 meters uh, and I ask how far do you expect to have to move down the line to encounter the first event, you're going to guess probably something like 10 meters, right? So that's exactly what this equation says. If the lambda is, is 0.1, then you expect the mean to be 10, okay? Uh, so a, um, a very similar uh, but much messier integral uh, where we have to integrate by parts twice <clears throat> will give us the variance of the exponential distribution. Uh, important property of exponential distributions is that like the geometric like their geometric counterpart in this discrete variable case, uh, they have a forgetfulness property. Okay, so the forgetfulness property says that the probability that the random variable x uh, occurs uh, before t1 and before t1 plus t2, given that it is at least after, time t1 is equal to the probability that the random variable x just occurs before t2 starting from 0. Okay, so, so let's think about what that really means. That means if I look along my time axis and I ask what's the probability that x occurs in here, right? So I have t1 and I have t1 plus t2 and I'm asking what is the probability that x occurs in this interval? That's the same as the probability that x occurs in the interval from 0 to t2 uh, along along this time axis, right? So if the if the length of the interval is the same, then the probability of occurrence inside that interval is the same, and it doesn't really depend on the origin of time in a sense, right? So uh, you guys can go through and you can prove this. Uh, you can do this exactly the way we did the case for the geometric distribution, showed the forgetfulness property over there. Uh, remember that the goal is to start with uh, a literal um, use of this conditional probability formula. We will write that as the probability that x is less than t1 plus t2 and that x is greater than t1 uh, normalized, renormalized by the probability that x is greater than t1 uh, and then go through and simplify that formula and what will happen is that all the t1 dependence will vanish and you will find that what's left is the exponentially distributed probability that x is uh, less than t2. Okay, so uh, same basic strategy works uh, for the exponential distribution. Okay, so um, so let's say a, a little bit about um, the continuous uniform normal, or sorry, the continuous uniform distribution. Um, actually, let's don't. Let's stop here.